It's hard to believe sometimes people say the 80s were such a long time ago. And I say, what you talking about? We're here in Niagara Falls to hear the 80s great band, The Spoons Are Here. Now it's amazing, you've been performing together for 40 years on stage. Started out in high school, I guess. Yep. Back then, did you ever think, we really have something here? No. <laughs> I never thought we'd be doing it for 40 years. It's, it's insane. Yeah. Like when you're young, you think, well, like 30 is over, over the hill for being in a band, you know? But then you turn 30, and then you turn 40, and then you turn 50, and it's like, <laughs> Keeps on going. as long as people want to hear us, that's so us. We'll be out there, yeah. yeah. It's nice to see that it's, I mean, you see the sitcoms and things like that where they have a high school band and they just kind of, they're accountants, they're doctors, they're lawyers. This became real for you guys and it's really cool that you're still together. Uh, well, I, st I do my own bookkeeping accounting job on the side as well yeah, so she, as music, but yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just a musician, so I, I, she was the smart one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now it all started, you got the airplay in the 80s and you started touring with some very big acts. Tell us, that must have been a really exciting time in your life when you started that. Yeah, it was just one, like a whirlwind of stuff. Like there were a couple of years where so much happened in, in a couple of years. It was like I wrote a book about th those, you know, the beginning of the Spoons and I can hardly put the pieces together because it was nonstop. You know, you have years where things sort of coast. Is that it was um, a really exciting time because we were just at the brink of the video age. So when we caught that, everything changed in the industry. And overnight, everybody knew who we were. Like it might take another band years to do that, but because of video, overnight, here's the spoons, and you know, right across the country, especially with the video for Nova Heart, which is really kind of different than yeah. most rock videos. was also we get to the video the early uh, start of, of much music this music channel and you were one of the big first Canadian bands to be played on that that had to be exciting uh, well Nova Heart wasn't was it? it was romantic shop it was on the yeah. first episode of much music yeah but prior to that it was like the chum FM countdown and the, the video shows the, the they new had music it. with uh, yeah. Jeannie Becker Jeannie Becker and <laughs> JD <laughs> Roberts and uh, <laughs> yeah we, we were all those things you know and we had no idea it was gonna blow up into this big phenomenon you know the video age so. It's cool, and then you work you work with a lot of great producers as well, Niall Rogers and and Daniel Lanois when no one knew him. Yeah, yeah, we were. Uh, Gord was in university. I was finishing college. At the same time, we were doing Stick for Your Neighborhood at Grand Avenue Studios, that, which Danny Lanois and his brother owned. So he engineered the album, our very first album, before he took off. So yeah, I was at McMaster. Danny was at Mohawk College in Hamilton. So we just do exams and rush down, do some tracks, and go back to school. And <laughs> That's crazy time. Yeah, I think Danny was talking to you two at that time, but there was no I idea what, yeah. what he's going to be doing. Like it yeah. was. Yeah. That had to be a wild time, though. I mean, you're yeah. doing that. You're in school. You're doing these videos. You're doing these albums, and then you're touring with like Culture Club, The Police, and we're still going everywhere. We were that young. We were yeah. living at home. And we were on the road so much. What was the point of having our own place? Because we were never home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It worked out well that way. Yeah. The crazy 80s. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, a lot of musicians say, you know, it's great experience to meet different musicians and, yeah. you know, see how they do it. But also the traveling, the places you've seen. Oh yeah, I mean right from playing like one night we were playing a place like I don't know what it was, a couple hundred people. All of a sudden we're in front of like a thousand people at at the Masonic Temple opening for I think Simple Minds, and all of a sudden we're in front of sixty thousand people with the police and talking heads at the grandstand at the, at the CNE. So it kind of went really fast instead of you know a long slow build. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now you uh, you've been releasing albums over the years and, and, and different tracks and, and still doing shows, but you have a very interesting one that I, I've looked at some of the tracks called Echoes. Tell us about this. This is a great album. Yeah. I don't want to do all the talking here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Echoes actually came from a couple of uh, artists that you knew because uh, he's on the Lost 80s tour with uh, Flock of Seagulls because he plays guitar for Flock of Seagulls as well, and a couple of the bands wanted to do a couple of our cover tunes for their own albums. 
And then Gord got thinking. Yeah, I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. they, they, they it start with the Information Society, and if you know that band from the States, they said, oh, we like that song over, can we do it? So sure, go ahead. And there's another band from LA called Feel is the Foreshadow. Young, they're a young band, but they yeah. love the 80s, and they're one of these bands that had just been on, like, America's Got, America's Got Talent, so up and coming, right? Mm -hmm. But I said, we kind of like that song, Old Emotions, do you mind if we do it? Yeah, yeah. Then I thought, wait a second, there's an idea. Just call up all the eight people we know, you know, most of the 80s bands, and everybody said yes, you know, from like Gowan and Glass Tiger and Strange Advance and went in Rome from England and. Images in Vogue. Yeah, um, real life from Australia, you know, they sent me an angel and, and did us the honor of, of doing our songs their own way. And it's pretty amazing. Like, it's my favorite CD right now in the car. I just can't stop listening to it. <laughs> and the proceeds for that at present time are going to the Unison Fund. Which is yes. to support the Canadian music industry, which is suffering like everything. But, yeah. So everything from crews to young bands and whoever needs it. So. Yeah, I saw that, and that's really worthwhile. And to put out some new music with some friends is really cool as you well. Know, I didn't think it was going to last this long. Like we put this together, we thought this was going to be out in the, in the summer, and I thought, well, it's not going to come out to the fall. I thought, well, maybe COVID will be finished by then. We, they don't need the money. Yes, they still need it. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So in, in in less than two years, we put out three albums. We have New Day, New World that came out, it's brand new material, um, came out in 2019, and then... Uh, repeatable, repeatable which, all the songs, like all the hits that you know from 20, 2000, not 2000, 1980, 2020, 20, <laughs> like, um, and double vinyl, it's, it's CD, but double, every band's got to put out a double vinyl, that was a pretty proud thing yeah, to have. Yeah, exactly, so, and it had taken a while, we put out collectibles back in 1995, but it only included the stuff in the early days that didn't... Uh, have the representation of, of the, the last two albums with Anthem Records, and we finally got clearance to release those. So, yeah, so it's got we everything. Finally, put everything. it all together. Yeah. And I mean, then, the '80s are great. There's, yeah, and then no Echoes. So yeah, three. <laughs> like I mean, just it, and stuff he's popping up. I mean, Novart's been used a lot of movies and old emotions, but Tell No Lies just got used in that new Christmas movie. You know, the one uh, Eight Bit Christmas. Oh yeah. It's on Netflix. I think it's uh, it's got what's his name, Patrick Stewart. Uh, not done. Uh, the guy from uh, How I Met Your Mother, what's his name? Oh, yeah. Anyway, it's got a lot of good actors in it. It's kind of like that movie, The Christmas Story, you know, with the narration okay, of the yeah, young guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's about the 80s and Nintendo games and stuff. But they use, they use um, Tunnel Lies. In, in a big uh, scene, yeah. yeah. I, I still love the 80s, and, and just before Christmas, we had Hoxley Workman on the show, and he was, he was talking about how he loves the 80s, and it didn't dawn on us. That was a while ago. It seems like it was only 20 years yeah. ago, but I still love it. Well, you see it pop up. I mean, look at The weekend's last album. It sounds so 80s. I mean, his keyboard sounds are like Pet Shop Boys and stuff like that. So many people grew up on that, and, you know, it's showing up in their music, you know. I think it's great. We could go out, there's a new band, and people say, well, they kind of sound kind of 80s, yeah, because we were, right? Yeah. I mean, you have so much material. You're talking about the albums that you released and thought that COVID was over. You must just be itching, I think everybody is, for it to be over, to get back on the road and just tour this material and get out there. Yeah, well, just before it all happened, we actually were on like a triple bill touring through the casinos with uh, ourselves, Men Without Hats, and Flock of Seagulls. So Gord got to play twice in the night. Uh, <laughs> um, and we were selling out casinos left, right, and center, oh, and then we closed them. <laughs> we were one of the last shows that, to make it. I think it was in Vancouver or something. Yeah. We heard of other bands who were like at the airport about being, to go to the gig, and they said, turn around and go home. It's oh, really? shutting down. We just snuck in the last minute. So. Yeah, I saw you years ago at uh, the Molson Amphitheater, the uh, Budweiser Amphitheater with uh, Corey Hart and uh, The Last Tiger, fabulous show, and and that's got to be fun too. I mean, you were 80s and you did your own material, but now Flock of Seagulls, that following too. It's very natural. They're very similar, and you know the guitar parts and stuff. Yeah, and and hopefully that tour, which got cut off by COVID, will continue once it opens up. Like there's some shows that were postponed like two years because of hope it's all been 2022 still, still sitting in the waiting uh, list yeah, to pick a date yeah. when well, can know, we do this we can't complain because we know a lot of bands aren't playing at all mm -hmm. but we were very creative during covid we played at islands rooftops driving theaters you know whatever golf course wherever we could play within the parameters of you know yeah and then of course we also formulated the band so gordon and i could just do it a, a semi-acoustically duo as opposed to the full band depending on the venue so we could keep it going Both, yeah yeah they, or they can't space the six feet apart enough <laughs> we did some theaters which was kind of freaky too where um i think we did a couple with 50 people were allowed like spread out okay. you know, and just the two of us and, and we did stream. one or two with nobody which is very odd you know, like a live streaming show that is yeah, it's like a Twilight Zone episode or something, <laughs> or a Black Mirror, you know, it's like the future that we don't want. <laughs> yeah. Now these are probably shows you never thought you'd do, but 
from the creative process, the music process, has this helped you having the time and saying, I can put some stuff together? Um, I'm not feeling very creative right now. <laughs> no, not at all. That's why it's great to have the greatest hits out and the, the yeah, remakes the by other people and yeah. let them, and, they, and nobody mailed it in. Every version is brilliant, like the, the work they put into it. Oh, it's mm -hmm. so good. Like we have, you know, somebody like Gowan taking our symphonies and doing it like just piano. And by the end, it's a symphony. It's got timpanis. And then we have a guy from Marilyn Manson and the Prodigy, oh. like, who took Bridges Over Borders. It's like screamo over the top heavy guitars. <laughs> and <it's, laughs> The variety is amazing on that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's got to be great. I mean, in 40 years now, you're still performing, still on, getting on stage and loving it. Yeah. Um, it got to be the same thrill years ago when you first heard your first song on the radio to still hearing it nowadays, isn't oh, for it? Sure, yeah, I, I think so. Like, it still means something, you know, like, especially when the uh, 90s came and grunge started, you know, a whole shift in music, I thought it was over. So to get a second life like we did, that's pretty amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought when 1990 came around, I thought, that's it, you know, got to find another job, another career or something. <laughs> yeah. but, but as soon, I think it was like 1995, I said, wait a second, people are starting to like it again. Yeah. I think it was too good. People have missed it, you know, they wanted it back. Oh. And we've had, uh, you know, new, new young artists reach out to us and say, how do you get that 80s sound? You know, <laughs> they want to know how we did it. You know? <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> secret formula. It's, recipe. <laughs> it's all in the hairspray. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, the, the, hearing the songs on the radio and still, still being relative and getting out and doing shows, it's got to be great, too, to see your fans that you haven't seen in a year and hear the stories from them that, Oh, I was 12 years old when I first heard that song. Was at my dance and all that. Well, we try to stay after shows, right? Just to talk to people and and um, chat. And we love those stories. Like we we have people say, "This is my wife. We met at your show, like one of your yeah. shows." And we or met in we, high school, at yeah, your show or had our first kiss or whatever. <laughs> or, you know, broke up or I don't know. It's like yeah. a lot of life stories that are great, and, and it, we enjoy those as much as you know people like our stories. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're still around and still doing the music. Uh, I enjoy it. Everyone is enjoying it. So have a great show. Thanks for joining thank us you. here in Niagara Falls. Oh, All right. Thank our you. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. She's losing him in romantic traffic. A place with no signs to tell you. of music and a great night to relive the 80s, the great music of the Spoons here in Niagara Falls. Reporting for The Source, I'm Bob getting into the 80s Romeo.